We all fall prey to them. Cognitive biases, which are these unconscious thinking patterns that can really hold us back when we're trying to achieve our goals. And I wish I had learned about them sooner because they're actually really easy to overcome, but so long as we can spot them first. So in this video, I want you to join me on my day and I'm gonna share some of the habits that I've kind of implemented that have helped me to break these mental barriers. And I briefly also wanted to thank Headspace for sponsoring today's video. I absolutely adore Headspace. I've been using their meditation app for years now. So I'm excited to chat more about them in a little bit. But for now, let's dive into the world of psychology and mental pitfalls. I think a lot of us feel like we're putting out small little fires left, right, and center. Like we're stuck in a little bit of a hamster wheel and we're not working on what's truly important to us, things that might offer long-term reward. And this could be because of a cognitive bias that's called the mere urgency effect, which is our tendency to prioritize urgent tasks over important ones. The mere urgency effect used to consume my days. I would wake up, I'd respond to emails in bed, and then I'd work reactively the rest of the day, tackling one seemingly time-sensitive task after the next. But as former US President Eisenhower once said, what's important is seldom urgent, and what's urgent is seldom important. So one habit that's helped me avoid getting caught up in the mere urgency effect is time blocking. And this is just a time management technique where we divide our day into these blocks that we then dedicate to specific tasks. So my approach is super simple. I just make sure that I set aside some time every single day to work on a task that's really important to me, but not necessarily urgent. So for example, this morning, I'm gonna be working on our Pickup Lines app. Our Pickup Lines app. <laughs> so this isn't necessarily urgent, but it's important. Like we can launch it whenever we want, but by dedicating a specific time block to it, I'm just making sure that it doesn't get buried under the urgent stuff. So this is one important thing off my list and now I'm gonna head into the studio because we're gonna be making some recipes today. It's a well-known fact at this point that home renovations frequently go over their allotted time and budget and that students notoriously run out of time to complete their projects. So this is because of a cognitive bias that's called the planning fallacy, which is our tendency to underestimate the time, cost, or effort that's required to complete a task, even when we've done it before. It's because we're optimistic. We feel like it's gonna be different this time. And I feel like I fall for this all the time because I, plan for the best case scenario, and then I expect everything to go according to plan, but I should know better by now. So to overcome the planning fallacy, I've gotten into the habit of tracking how long tasks actually take, and then I use this information to create more realistic schedules. I also always add a buffer of about 20% to my estimates so that I'm not stressed out if things don't go as planned, which can often be the case. And I feel like I always used to do something like this, at least feel like an extreme version of it. When I was in university, I would actually move my exam date three days earlier in my agenda. And even though I knew it wasn't true, seeing the date fast approaching, it really motivated me to study. And if I needed a little bit of extra time, well, now I had it. So add buffers, honestly, they're game changers. Yeah. Say no, no, don't touch it. Have you ever found that when you go home at the end of the day, that you have these unfinished tasks still floating around in your head? This is likely the result of what psychologists call the Zygarnik effect. And it's our tendency to remember uncompleted tasks more easily than completed ones. It's just because our brains seek closure and resolution. It's the same effect that actually explains why we keep thinking about the show that ended in a cliffhanger. The problem is when unfinished tasks dominate our thoughts, they take up brain power and they dilute our focus on other things. And at the end of the day, I don't want the intrusive thoughts of tasks left undone following me home when I'm trying to wind down. So what can we do about it? Well, for one, the brain is a terrible filing system. So what I try to do, instead of keeping all the tasks floating around in my head, I make a habit of writing them down as part of my end of workday routine. I make a super brief and rough plan for tomorrow. It takes like two minutes, but it's just so that I know the uncompleted tasks are soon gonna be resolved, and that way I can hopefully just relax and enjoy my evening. They think this is too much pasta for the sauce. That's so creamy. No, it's perfect. Have you 
Have you ever noticed that you dwell on unpleasant events more often than pleasant ones? Like if someone says something mean or if you experience a setback, it follows you through the day. This is the negativity bias at work, which is our natural tendency to be more affected by negative experiences than positive ones. This is why negative news coverage tends to be more attention grabbing than positive coverage. It's because it plays on our negativity bias. And the problem is that this bias can really negatively affect how we think, how we feel, the risks that we choose to take and how we perceive people. So to combat the negativity bias, I've gotten into the habit of doing two things before I sleep and it takes like five minutes max. The first is that I just jot down a few things I'm grateful for that happened that day. I find that it really helps to offset the imbalance that the negativity bias creates because it forces us in a way to be more aware and mindful of the positive things that have happened that day. And the other thing I do is I meditate and it's just for a few minutes, but I cannot begin to tell you what meditation has done for my state of mind. And again, I wanted to thank Headspace for partnering with us on today's video. I picked up meditation about eight years ago to help to calm my nerves. I was going through a difficult time and learning about meditation was transformational. It was amazing. But I also just found that I felt kind of uneasy. It was a little bit uncomfortable being by myself doing it. I felt like I just couldn't sit for that long. And so I just didn't keep up with it. But that was until I was introduced to the Headspace app and I absolutely love it. So now essentially every night before I go to bed or sometimes I'll do it in the mornings, I'll just follow one of their three minute guided meditation sessions. And after even such a short session, I find that I'm so much more calm and less reactive to the negative thoughts and emotions that I might be experiencing. It's with He's the reason I keep coming back to this app. I love his voice. So their guided meditations are easily my favorite and they have longer sessions too, like five, 10, 20 minutes or more, but I just prefer to stick with the shorter ones because I think it's a lot easier to stay consistent with it. But they also have a whole bunch of other content on there as well, like mindful walks and runs, breathing exercises, sleep content, and a whole lot more. So if you're interested in incorporating meditation into your daily routine, I highly recommend giving Headspace a try and you can actually sign up and get an exclusive 60 day free trial just by checking out the link that I'm going to leave for you in the description box below. I promise you're going to love it. And I think that's it for today, friends. I hope you enjoyed learning about these cognitive biases and the habits that we can implement to overcome them. If you did enjoy the video, feel free to give it a thumbs up because it always means a lot when you do. And Pick Up Lime's signing off. I appreciate you hanging with me today. See you in the next video.